And that looks like it for combat here. Come quick, we have a situation on a cliffside. They have the commander. Okay, that sounds pretty urgent, but it's in most games, in reality, you can get around to doing it whenever you want. So I'm going to loot the corpses over here yes. and check out what's going on. So several skulls bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds are spiked on roughly... I think we might have read that before. Uh, we've got potions, which I used a lot of then, actually. Could have gone better. Uh, broken falcs. Okay. Weapons and armor are strewn haphazardly around cat. Every blade that shows sign of rust and repair. And every piece of armor needs repair. Okay. Uh, cheese. And a cap. Shit, isn't that good? What's that? Oh, we've got to level up soon. I will be doing that soon. But before I do, I'm going to have a look around. Weapons and armor are stacked with neat precision on his transport cart. Every spear is honed and oiled, ready for battle. Can't do that. Uh, there's a sky cap, which gives extra lore that could be useful later on. Will be useful later on. Kairos ordered the original icon of the disfavored erased from memory for over a hundred years. And she's got something to say about that. We can see her speech icon change down there. This favoured have kept the scratched out iconography, wearing it with pride. Let's have a word of first then. Couldn't help you but notice how you're eyeballing this favoured symbol littered about the camp. It's hardly a symbol, just a scroll. That's true, but it used to be the pride of Graven Ash's legion before Kairos made them the face set. What happened? Word has it that the Ash has been under more scrutiny than the other Archons, seeing as he took a stand against Kairos in the past. And a bit of detail did for that, Law. Even though he bent the knee in the end, that doesn't place him above suspicion. Kairos and the other Archons keep him on a tight leash. Ash's troops impressed the growing empire, but Kairos made them sacrifice everything they were up to that point. Ash surrendered but they've been disfavoured ever since, and fighting to earn back their honour. I guess that's why you don't cross the Overlord. Kairos holds a grudge with a mean jealousy. Uh, what do you need? Some of the questions we can ask her, but it takes a long time to get through them, so I'm going to be do it, doing that a bit later on. Right, let's come up to this part of the camp. Uh, symbol of Scarlet Chorus is smeared in blood on a tattered cloth tent. No effort has been made to repair the gaping tears. There's a, something here. Uh, right, Graven Banner. It's favoured banner. Uh, oh, there's Fendrum Guard in there. Gate. can sell that. Someone cowering up here. Okay, doesn't want us to draw attention to him. Right, so at this point, I think... Well, uh, let's check out the journal, actually. This updates your quests as well. I haven't had a look at this yet. So you can see that we have to defeat the remaining rebels in the camp to do this quest, and that's a uh, quest beyond it, I think. If I want to upgrade my character, then, we get an attribute point every time we level up. We're chucking spent in one of those, and will be shortly. It mentions, though, once you get to 19 skill points, to get to 20 it requires two attribute points. So at that point, it actually makes it not worthwhile, really, to update or upgrade it anymore. Uh, I think, supposedly, you can level up about 14 to 16 times before you complete the game, depending on how many quests you do. That's what I've heard. Uh, so in this circumstance... I think I'm going to keep on increasing my quickness to the maximum amount. You can see when I hover over these as well, you can see which attributes are boosted. And as I mentioned earlier on, I definitely want to be increasing my dodge skill because I'm going to be picking up evasion for my talent 
Surely, in fact, I'll do it now. I mentioned all about the talent points tree. So, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to pick up two in range as well, so I can immediately pick it. Uh, right, so let's pick that now. Save. Okay. So we're now using dodge instead of parry. And quickness will actually increase that more. So let's do that. We can see it actually goes up. I can... There are... My shield I've got at the moment actually gives us a bonus, but it's actually a pretty crappy shield to start with. You can get a much bigger bonus with them later on. There are even talents that increase shield's ability, which I may want to pick up to give us even more defense. Uh, right, so that's up to 19. I am going to be wanting it to be very offensive as well later on with a high might level, and I will be picking up spells shortly. So let's save that. In fact, that guy sells spells, so I'm going to be uh, sort of getting some from him soon. Okay, let's go and find out what all the commotion Money. is going on over here. Stow your weapons, or we find out how Lorna Man screams before hitting the ravine down below. Cornered between a precipitous drop and a band of angry soldiers, the Oathbreaker warrior holds a disfavoured officer at knife point. Skew him. Worry not for me. Graven Ash will protect. I mentioned about Graven Ash's abilities. The disfavoured officer winces, blood seeping from the seams of his braces and cuirass. You heard the man. He plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Permission from your pimp? This blade? With a jerk of the knife, he slices off a clump of Drastus's matted hair. If you're so eager to see your ally dead, just step closer. So there's a lot of options here. Uh, let's try this one. Release a prisoner and you might know the inside of a cell. Now I'm sure that cell will have daily visits from Scarlet Chorus Cads thirsty for a bit of torture. He shakes his head, pulling the captive closer. I'd rather take my chances with death. Now that's unfair. I assure you it's more a hunger for torture than a thirst. But you are correct. We have no charity left for those who have laughed at our mercy once before. The blood chanter slams her staff on the ground, curling her fingers with a quivering hand. If you fools won't deal with him, maybe I will. Whatever you're thinking, don't. Not until Commander Drastus is safe. That's a stone she'll mention it. So we still have the same options. Uh, so the question is, which one should I pick? Well, uh, most of them have some sort of reputation, and if I wanted to specifically get those, it might be a pretty good idea. Or if I want a certain outcome to happen. Uh, there's athletics option, though. Lower your weapon and charge forward and wrest the knife from him. Uh, there's conquest. I'm Govanon. My name should be known to you, and it should be an honorable one. Please give me the knife. Uh, we actually gain favor for with the disfavor and minor wrath with the Scarlet Chorus. I'm actually going to do that one in this circumstance. I'm not going to go for the skill bonus, which I often would go for. You have gained wrath with the Scarlet Chorus, favor with its favor. You, your Tunon's envoy. He watches you closely for a long moment until his posture slackens and he lowers the knife. If you vouch, will vouch for my safety, then I'll... His sentence is halted by a spear thrust into his lun. Leaping forward, the moment Tyrell lowers his blade, the disfavoured soldiers slaughter the oath breaker. Dazed but alive, Drastus lets out a long sigh and struggles to his feet. Uh, so I can say nothing, or... I offered that man mercy and you made a liar out of me. Gain disfavoured wrath. Minor amount. But these mongrels require a firm hand. They can't be trusted and... So there's a few different options. Which one should I go for? 
Uh, once on a fault lies the oath breaker. Thought you'd apply to North. Do not disgrace me again. Uh, I think I am going to go for that one. My order. I understand. My apologies. It will not happen again. Kairos be praised that Oathbreaker fought with the rage of Cairn himself. There's a bit of lore on Cairn there. Is the Arcan of Stone? That is one of the things you can select in Conquest, but I didn't. Uh, so, Dresser slides a trembling hand along the cut on his neck. Thank you, Fatebinder. I thought today was my last. From the look of it, guess they thought if they swarmed the pass, maybe one might make it out. We found a few scraps of parchment on the bodies. Drastus holds out a handful of crumpled parchments for your inspection. That mentions a lack of literacy in the North, an empire. Uh, this game isn't obviously a historical game, but uh, yeah, it's uh, based around early Bronze Age, Iron Age. Uh, students of letters such as yourself should be able to make sense of this. Uh, okay, so I'm actually going to pick this one here. Uh, yeah, we'll gain minor wrath. All that training and graven ash doesn't teach you to read. Disfavored, very minor wrath. You can get skills on both sides of the favor or disfavored. Uh, option, so if there's an option maybe to get some wrath alone, then that might be a good idea. So let's examine the parchment. Repeating the same messages in different written scripts, the parchments explain the Vendrian Guard's desire to overthrow Kairos's Archons and rout their armies from the Tears. Pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to the Younger Realms to gather at Vendrian's Well. Useless scrawling, nothing more. Well, from the look of it, we kept them from slipping out of the valley. Whatever they hope to accomplish, I think their plan died here. The Archons are expecting you. When you're ready, leave by the gate to the southeast and follow the trails downslope for a few hours. You'll see the campfires leagues away. Can't miss it. Okay, so we're getting close now to the end of this first bit. Uh, what's pure water of Queen Lycaris's tears has run red with blood since Kairos forces invaded. Let's have a word with some of the people over here. I got it. Kairos says, peace be with you. Graven Ash is better than we deserve. And there's actually some equipment here. It's water, it's got in the stash. There's actually another scroll. There is a two-handed weapon, which I don't want to use, because I don't use two-handed weapons with this character. And quick finger bangles, which is actually an accessory. Extra quickness, which should be very useful for these two characters. So, let's take a look in the inventory. I'm actually using two already. I think I'm going to stick the vitality on her. I'm going to give the bangles to the main guy. And, uh, yeah, let's have a look at this. Uh, I do have enough lore with my main character, not with Versto, to unlock this scroll. So it's a magical expression of a distant impact. If we take a look in the spells, which I'll be able to use in not too long a time. That, uh, yeah, it's a different type of spell, basically. Let's have a word with Aurora, I think. Fate Binder, Aurora salutes as you approach. We are honoured by your presence. Need something. What's the situation here in Vendron's Well? The Oathbreakers hold the citadel at the heart of the valley, the one built 
around the base of the spire. Aurora points east towards the tower in the distance. The Italian river has been our largest headache during the siege. It's unsafe for armoured troops to ford, save for a key, few key locations, and the enemy knows this as well as we do. I know we'd be a lot farther along if the Scarlet Chorus used its alleged strength in numbers to ford the river themselves and overwhelm the enemy. Aurora looks at verse with a disapproving air. As it is, we must take the valley slowly and advance the disfavoured bulwark since that's where the real work gets done. Because all it takes is numbers to cross the river and a hail of arrows. If the disfavoured were quicker to act, maybe the Vendrian Guard wouldn't be so trained up to face us. And we've got a few options here. Uh, there's a lower one which I might want to take. Uh, yeah, I think I do actually want to take that one. So gain favour with his favoured and loyalty with this. A fair point. The Legion is eager to gain some perspective on our quarrels. Consequently, I retract my previous remark. Really? Because I don't. Next time you say something, try to mean it. How long have you been with the disfavoured? Seven years. She pauses to count on her fingers. Two seasons, mayhap, a handful of days. I trained at Fort Resolution a bit before the conquest. Compared to the commanders you find around camp or station at Iron Hearth, that makes me one of the young bloods. This has been a long and grueling campaign, but the end is in sight. We'll soon have the oath breakers back under control. Then we can rest, retrain, and even cycle out troops so we can see our families again. What can you tell me of the Vendrian Guard? They are a last gasp of the younger realms. Among them are warriors that escaped the Bastard City siege, a few refugees from other victories, and a bunch of Vendrian locals with delusions of independence. These southern wastrels cannot match our iron, nor the chorus's numbers. What on Taratus gave them the nerve to rise up and ask for a second helping of battle is anyone's guess. Seen anything interesting during the war? I once saw a forge-bound artisan set himself on fire. Occupational hazard. That was an unpleasant day. First of many, to be honest. I wasn't near to catch or watch you proclaim the Edict of Storms, but I saw the devastation hit Stalwart and take up several cohorts of disfavoured with it. She squeezes her eyes shut and shakes her head. Carry on. She taps a gauntlet to a breastplate and salutes. Have a pleasant siege, fate binder. Okay, something here, quest journal mention. Right, let's have a look around the camp before we get a move on there. I Looks got like it. there's something to interact with there. What weapon she using as well? Okay. Let's check that out then. 37 athletics not met. The rope appears to be secured wrongly enough to hold your weight. Ah, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, so, what athletics does she have? 31. I'm too off. Is there any way I can increase that? I need finesse, might. Uh, yeah, if I'd have selected more might instead of vitality, I would have been able to do that. So, maybe I'm regretting that. Currently, but um, I'll have to come back here. On it. There is actually reasons to come back here to grab that at some point. Or grab other things. Okay. Seems to be some conversations going on here. The outcome demands all prisoners be given a chance to serve the chorus. These lion horseborn had their chance long ago. I say kill him. The prisoner says his name is Tarkos Deimos. I think it's the guy we were fighting over here late, uh, earlier. Drastus lets her alongside, tapping his gauntleted finger to his temple. Now I don't think this is a complicated matter. He dies. His family has been a driving force in the Vendrian Guard. Kill him should demolarize whatever's left of the Tarkis clan. All must be given a chance to find absolution and service to the Scarlet Chorus. The mage points a finger at the disfavoured officer, and you know full well 
this has always been our way. He has a chance to be slave or soldier. Only then do we feed him to the pigs. We'd let you take prisoners, but you can't control them. You send these conscripts out on patrol, and they never return. Defecting all over again. I can't let this nonsense strategy continue. Well, I insist this Oathbreaker be taken to the voices of Narat, leaving us at an impasse. Fortunately, we have a fate binder here to settle the matter for us. The Chanter turns to you, an expectant smile creeping across her face. So, what say you? What should become of this prisoner? Okay, so we got a couple of which, well, it's either selecting one of these parties or the other by the looks of it and gaining reputation or losing reputation or wrath what gives last I was here the disfavored showed little mercy to the enemy I'm gonna go for the conquest option based on my previous choices in the conquest the commander lets out a long sigh as he touches the wound by his neck these filthy hill people spat on the surrender we were fools to even treat them as anything more than violent children mercy is what got us into this protracted fight. Let's not continue this mistaken strategy. Okay, so in this circumstance I am going to favor Chorus. Chorus should be allowed this chance to recruit new warriors, gain average wrath with the disfavored and average favor with the Scarlet Chorus. Drastus, this is the sort of nonsense that got us into this mess we're in now. If we keep showing these mongrels mercy, they'll just bite us time and time again. It will calm your nerves, I assure you. This one won't be put on the battlefield. This mage snaps her fingers loudly, gesturing for her gan to listen. Make sure the prisoner is taken straight to the voices of the rat. I won't keep you here any longer, Faintbinder. I know you have important business in the valley. Drastus salutes his iron gauntlet wrapping against his breastplate. For the glory of Kairos. Okay, so that situation is handled, the looks of it. Right. And as you can probably gather or guess, uh, we're going to be deciding upon the fate of many things, being a fate binder during the course of the game. Let's have a word with the rest of the camp before we move on. S some quests or, well, some things to do still. Fate binder, a pleasure to have you join us. You never really know if one of Tunon's officers is battle ready until the fighting breaks out. She nods with approval. You can clearly hold your own in a fight. A broad-shouldered, disfavoured soldier snaps to salute. I thank Kairos for that. There's been too much talk of late and not enough action. The Archon of War is planning his next move. Would you have him hasten his plans for your impatience? Superior officer glowers through the gap in her helm. Ne never, ma'am. Graven Ash protects. She holds a salute with a tightly clenched fist. I'm just eager to see the Vendoran Guard buried under their own patched defences. Need something? Okay, out of those options, why hasn't the siege been resolved? It's because the Scarlet Chorus scoff at the great general's plans, and they aren't carrying their weight. They should be using their great numbers to patrol and harass the enemy, if you ask me. I think they're intentionally going easy on the Oathbreakers. She grinds her fist into her palm. Even if they listen to us, are they even capable of following orders? The Scarlet Chorus doesn't have a chain of command, just a rabble of gan bosses cutting each other's throats for advancement. Pissing on a disfavoured is like a badge of honour. If you don't mind me saying so. You can see there's a lot of uh, discord between the armies. Tell me about the disfavoured. We are a proud elite of Kairos' military strength. Selected from the finest northern stock and hammered against the anvil of war. If you want to put that in perspective, the disfavoured are a sword forged with care, then polished and sharpened to perfection. She clears her throat. The Scarlet Chorus are more of a rusty pitchfork dredged out of a swamp. 
effective in large numbers, but easily outclassed. Graven Ash protects indeed what have you survived. In my early days, I broke from my phalanx and ran at an enemy, received a spear in my guts for my efforts. It took the better part of an afternoon for the Archon's protection to patch me up, learned a valuable lesson too. When I was at Azure, I caught a hammer blow to the side of the head. All I remember is a ringing sound and feeling my skull shatter from jawline to ear to top. I woke up hours later. The medic says there's a piece of helmet lodged in my brain. She draws herself up. My badge, my reminder. We owe it all to the great general. He gives us the strength to fight where others would flee and stand when others would fall. What a pile of done. They are right about one thing. The disfavoured have taken too many blows to the head. She scoffs and crosses her arms. You don't believe in Ash's protection? I believe in it all right, but I don't buy that he's doing anyone a favour. In war, death is a lesson, survival its own reward. If Ash protects his soldiers, the weakest of them occupy a space in a phalanx that could be put to better use. I think I'll pick the option to gain favour with his favour here. Graven Ash gives his soldiers a chance to improve, which is more than the voice of the rat allows. Might, even though it doesn't say it, it might actually affect her. No, it didn't. Uh, you've gained favour with disfavoured. There are some rare circumstances where that can happen, and it doesn't happen often, though. Off to an early start adjudicating the problems between our camps, are we? Voices of Narat doesn't give his soldiers anything but a purpose. He barely even feeds us. We take everything we want, including our advancement. As you were. Okay, so that's the local disfavors. Looks like there's some more Scarlet Chorus over here. I don't think my bells can take enough of much amount of the siege. My teeth are falling out. Glory to the voices. Who's that? It's a crescent runner. Glory to Graven Ash. Glory to Kairos. There's enough chorus there. Hail Kairos and glory to the voices of Narat. The Scarlet Chorus soldier nods at you, her brow furrowed in concentration. I take it you're the gopher everyone's talking about. Are you getting the lay of the ruins or just avoiding the archons? We picked this area clean months ago. All that's left are some old stones and that prize off in the distance. She nods to the towering spire above the citadel. What do you want? Is that how you speak to a superior officer? It's how I speak to you. Only just arrived in camp and you think you know more about breaking a siege than the rest of us. She huffs and shakes her head. It's actually an athletics option here which I uh, could definitely do with if I want to get up there anytime soon. So let's pick that up. A lot of skill points. Well, what are you doing? Catching something in your expression, the soldier's eyes widen. I didn't mean anything by it, it was just prodding. I was just prodding to see if you'd balk. She... Alright, it's got a couple of options. I'll do the stare down. You hold the soldier's unblinking gaze, silently filling the moments with every ounce of command you can muster. I... I'll shape up. It's fate binder from now on. Didn't mean to step beyond my rank, sir. She frowns, as if the word feels unnatural. I'm glad you have the capacity to see reason back to my questions. What do you want to know? She rubs the back of her neck. Tell me about these ruins. This place used to be an actual fort when Cain came through. The Archon of Stone pulled down most of the masonry with him. She spits an impressive glob of phlegm. Not sure if it was intentional, but he left the old statue in one piece. It's carved in the likeness of old Queen like Keras, she scratches the back of her head, smirking, strangest thin. The statue started crying blood around the time of the war. I like to think we clobbered the Vengeran Guard so badly that their ancestors could feel it. What do you know about the spire? I know how to tell time by a shadow, and that it hurts my neck if I stare up at it for too long. 
Really, it's no different from the spires in the north. Big, ugly, and inaccessible. It's strange that the Vendrian people built their citadel around it. But there's no accounting for taste. Farewell. Be seeing you, Fatebinder. The side of her mouth jerks in a grin. Okay, I think the last person over here now is just Cosma. So let's have a word. Fatebinder, what an honour to have one of Tunon's court visit our humble holdfast. Need supplies? Bursting with energy, the merchant slams her palm down on the top of the crate. If so, you've come to the right place. So, what will it be today? She spreads out a welcoming arm over her wares. I trust you've been granted proper stewardship of the goods you are peddling. I, uh, well, you see, Fatebinder, the merchant cranes her head to the side, scratching her neck. I think so. So I've been handed these bits of scripts. She reaches across a stack of provisions to snatch a scroll case. But I'm not a woman of letters. Numbers are my strength, as you can well imagine. Let me see those. Certainly, good fate binder. She hands you the scroll case while well, wearing a quizzical expression. A cursory read indicates this merchant is granted the unlimited right to trade in a logistical capacity when not supporting an active battle. She has the right to trade grain, copper and olives anywhere in the tiers. Well, looks like we have... Ah, actually, let's do this option first. Where did you get these? Hakin Bronze acquired these on my behalf. Doesn't actually let you know who that is. From Archon Tunon's agents, I believe. Her expression shows deep concern. Do you see any issue? Well, looks like we have a slight problem here. A problem? But how can that be? I paid a span's profit for the stewardship. What sort of problem is there? I'm going to go for... Is this some sort of joke? These scripts are nonsense. A joke? Her body stiffens, her eyes dart about her wares. I was assured, I mean, paid. I paid for the rights. What do I do now? I can fix the lettering. What's it worth to you? What's it worth? Well, I guess it's worth all my wares minus one copper in. She cups her face and hands, scratching at her temple as she groans in frustration. I've got copper, an amethyst, I think it's an amethyst, amethyst anyway, and an axe, a proper iron axe that used to belong to a disfavoured. His shield is faulty, but the axe. Purple is a good colour. The party is received, a zeolith shard. Cosma, she hoists out of her pocket a purple stone not a proper amethyst, but a stone remarkably similar in appearance. Maybe you've a lass or lad that'll enjoy the bauble. Though I imagine fate binders don't find time for children. She places the stone in your hand. Now, if you don't mind, she thrusts the parchment before you with a look of expectation. So I can change this in various ways, do nothing have it in her favour, or have the trade rights to her ruin. I imagine, but I don't know this for certain yet, because I haven't played uh, that far into the game, uh, that we'll probably be meeting her again. I am going to modify the trade rates, rights in her favour. Once done, after I've fleeced her, once done, you hand her the parchment and she accepts with a smile. Thank you, Fate Binder. You'll always have the friend's discount when you shop with me. How's trade? Well, this is a service posting. No profits up here in the pass. That's Hakim Bronze's orders. But when we march out of the valley, I'm back on my own schedule. And here's to hoping this year is a good one. The Overlord forbids the extortion of the pathways. Good thing too, because in the years past I'd lose most of my profits to tolls. Couldn't turn a copper if I tried to haul long distance. Let's see what you have. 
Right, so we get to see our first shot basically, and there is actually some things here which I would like to trade for. But before I do that, I should probably figure out what I want to actually sell. Okay, I've had a little look in my inventory and reorganized things to figure out what I want to sell. You can see the Azulith Shard down there is actually mentions that it's a quest item which is surprising so yeah it's probably a pretty decent idea that I picked that up rather than the axe which I don't think it would have been too useful uh, not entirely sure actually I can't remember I've looked at it before but uh, yeah let's talk to Cosman and sell some stuff then and buy some stuff in fact you can see down here that there's a scroll a sigil of lightning core so we can now, if I pick that up, actually use some spells, which uh, is uh, very, very important. I definitely want to be able to do that. These are important as well, but they may be a bit too expensive for me to pick up currently. That needs lower 35, that's 30. I've got enough for both of those. The leather buckler isn't actually better than my current shield, so I don't think I'll pick that up. I'm not sure if there's any weapons that I want to pick up that are particularly better. Uh, versus current weapons actually have some small bonuses so they're pretty good starting weapons I don't think there's a better javelin here for my main character or is there? doesn't look like it is it? Uh, maybe that, I'm not sure, probably not though yeah so let's pick that up, uh, let's go in my stash then as well so, weapons, that's a two-handed weapon, I don't want that, so I can come down here. Cap, I probably don't want, but I won't sell it quite yet. Consumables, gonna keep on to, more accessories. Dash Spire, for a Spire uh, stash later on, which comes in the start of Act 2, spoiler. And uh, Broken Helmet, let's sell that, that's of no use. I think all of these can be sold without issue as well, so let's get some more. It's not cash within this game, it's actually rings. If we look up here, we can see them. So it's copper, bronze, and iron. Of course, it's the most valuable thing in the Iron Age. Uh, so, let's trade for that. So I have two bronze rings now and 25 copper rings. I'm not sure the exchange rate, actually. I think it's 25 copper per... No, it might be 100 copper per bronze, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. So which of these should I pick up? I only really pick up one currently. Uh, I can't remember which. Uh, oh, that's the area of a spell. Duration of a spell. Oh, uh, I. To be honest, they're both good, and I want both of them. I'm gonna pick that one up first. Then now, let's trade for that. And yeah, I'm literally out of money. Actually, <laughs> I didn't realize I. Just gonna spend everything there. So let's go back into the inventory and use these. Let's pick up the lightning core. So we've learned our first spell core, the sigil of lightning. And our lore should have gone up as well, which is great for both characters. And this one, let's learn that also. Sigil of Limitless Boundaries 1. Okay, if we come into the spell creation, and that was for the store as well, mentions a bit of details there. So this mentions all about spell creation. You need cores and expression and as many accents as your lore allows. You can enter those into the party slots. That's the one you can actually pick up during conquest. You can rename them if should you wish. And I mentions about this something or other. Okay, so let's pick a core. We only have one to pick from, so it's Lightning. Uh, let's pick that. And we only have one option for that, which is range, which I picked up somewhere. That's going to cost an extra twenty, an extra ten law. Uh, uh, Fifteen. That's so just twenty-five law. I need to be able to use this spell. And as you can see here, I actually have four slots for my main character and even verse 
who isn't a, really a spellcaster can actually cast spells. Everyone can cast spells within the game. Uh, that's how it works within Tyranny. Uh, so let's assign this. Assign it to there and there. And there's actually another spell option here. This charge fist as well, it does shock damage against endurance and it pushes the target. Uh, because we use that as well, the range is increased from 2 meters to 4 meters. It adds an extra couple of meters range. So this expression, distant impact, changes the spell type completely, but it's still lightning based. And there's actually another option here which I bought that costs 25 lore to use uh, right so there's a range option and that that would be 65 too expensive in fact that's too expensive as well uh, maybe I should have bought the other one I can't remember what it was it might have been less lore though to be honest still my lore isn't enough to uh, probably make use of that other one at the moment so I'm gonna have to increase it and the way to increase that is by using it more using Casting spells basically. Got just enough for her as well, so she can also use it. Now, lightning, it should actually tell you what skills you need here, and it doesn't, so hopefully they add that in a future patch at some point. Eventually, though, when we start using it, it will come under these skills here. I believe lightning actually requires quickness and wits, all the spells, control spells need uh, wits actually. And if you go into the journal, there's actually a ton of options here. Uh, it's a biography of what we've done so far. There's a lot to read there. Uh, there's all these control things here for all the different spell types. I think there's 11, so there's a huge amount, actually. Magic is a big part of this game. Uh, so, yeah, the fact that we, it uses quickness and wits means that we're actually going to be pretty good with lightning spells straight away, with these characters. Half of the accuracy comes down to using lore, and half of it is from a skill associated with that spell type. Right, so we have finished with here, and uh, I think I'm pretty much Morning. ready to move on now. I didn't pick up enough athletics, I think, to use this yet, so we're going to have to come back. Which is fine, because I still need to buy that expression, I think it was, there. Oh, I do have enough, okay. I think I picked up some experience Curious. down there before, didn't I? So that was enough. And there's actually a hidden object here, and you can see it mentions it over here. And you have a better chance if you're actually sneaking. You didn't see nothing. Like that. But you can find it without using it sometimes. And that's a potion of invisibility we found. Which could be handy later on. And when you use a skill, you get more experience, you get better at it. So my experience probably went up then. I didn't notice it. It's actually up to 40 now. Main character. I got it. Don't know what I started on. 28, maybe. Something like that. There's something over here. So, before I exit this level, I'm going to want to pay that a visit, I think. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of people down here guarding the camp. Kairos should not have accepted a vengeance surrender. Hill Kairos. So our journal entry, by the way, now is uh, travel to the disfavored camp, which I'll be doing shortly. Right, so looks like another athletic skill check, I guess. Climb the wall? No, I guess. Uh, 32 athletics to do that. I'm hoping this hasn't got up in... No, it's uh, 39 still. Brilliant. Okay. Maybe I don't, th I don't think they do go up when you level, perhaps. I'm not 100% sure. That wasn't so hard. Okay, brilliant. There's a couple of nice items here by the looks of it. There's light leather gauntlets. And there's another scroll. And this one actually needs a heck of a lot of lore to use. Let's check. Is that in more detail? So I need 80 lore for that. So this sky cap I picked up might come in handy for that eventually. It adds an extra 10 lore for a bit. The light leather gauntlets. Well, I do have some gauntlets already with my main. That's light leather. That's heavy armor. Point five. 
Let's check this. Compare. They are worse in armor, worse in crush. But a light armor often gives you extra deflection. And it's better recovery and accuracy and precision. So those might be pretty good for her. Let's check her. So the Scarlet Fury gauntlets. Uh, it's better in deflection, precision, and an armor which we're not going to use of her. But uh, yeah. They are better, aren't they? So I'm going to equip her with those. And her original gauntlets can go over there. So that was definitely worthwhile coming up there. We've got a bit of a subterfuge skill as well. And because of that, we're progressing to the next levels. Right. Can't do that. Right, so we're nearly ready to uh, actually go to that disfavored camp. So if I click on here, we can actually see the local map. So the disfavored camp's down there, and the much mentioned spire is in the distance over here. We can see my character's banner, and if we click on that, we can actually see the uh, main map for the world. But we can't access that yet because there's an edict avalanche that trapped us within the valley of uh, Vengeance well of course so I can't do that yet I think before I actually go to the camp I actually going to want to need to talk I suppose I can give you a moment of my time speak with verse and find out a bit more what do you need about her